Dear colleagues, my name is Peter van der Kerkhoff. I'm Chief Medical Officer of the International Psoriasis Council. And in this Take 10 video, I have pleasure in speaking with you about skin care for patients with psoriasis. These are my conflict of interests. First, I would like to present to you the model Bricks and Cement, which is a model for the structural and functional aspects of the epidermis. That is, we have horn cells, and these are symbolized as bricks. Horn cells contain lots of protein, and some of these proteins are humectants. That means they bind water and they take care that the water content of the epidermis is optimal. And of course, between the horn cells, the bricks, there is cement. And the cement is a composition of fats and ceramides in the well-known lipid bilayer. And this component provides the skin barrier and prevents that we are not exicating. The skin barrier in psoriasis is impaired. We can measure that by an increase in transepidermal water loss and the ceramide profiles are changed in psoriasis. Furthermore, the skin of psoriatic lesion is dry. There is a decreased water content by decreased humectant functions. And an important humectant function has the molecule filigrin. And we know that in psoriasis, filigrin is decreased. In the normal situation, insults to the skin, they happen continuously by friction, by trauma to the skin, by infections and all sorts of other factors. An abnormal response of barrier recovery occurs in patients with psoriasis. That is, in the psoriatic lesion, there's abnormal differentiation with a premature early involucrin expression with keratin-16 expression instead of keratin-10 and a decrease in filigrin content. And furthermore, there is an increased recruitment of cycling epidermal cells, epidermal hyperproliferation. During the last three decades, we have discovered that there is also in psoriasis an excessive number of increased antimicrobial peptides. For example, beta defensins are increased, antiprotease are increased, and for example, the molecule LL37 is increased in psoriasis. And we know that there is a genetic predisposition in patients with psoriasis for these important aspects. That is firstly, the LCE3 gene cluster, the late cornified envelope gene cluster is a psoriasis susceptibility gene. And furthermore, there is an increased copy number of beta defensins. So there is a genetic constitution of increase of excessive antimicrobial peptides. LL37 complexes and binds to DNA of the self in the microbiome. And in a TLR7, TL9 dependent manner, plasmocytodendritic cells are stimulated and the end result of this immune stimulation is the increased production of IL-17 and IL-22 in psoriasis. And from these cytokines, we know that the interference, um, that they interfere with um, the epidermis in a way that involucrin is expressed earlier, filigrin is decreased. And therefore, we see a vicious circle that the skin of patients with psoriasis 
is less well equipped against the skin barrier. What are then our recommendations with respect to skin care and with respect to living with psoriasis? Firstly, heating and air conditioning are often forced air systems and the skin evaporates quite fast and there is a loss of epidermal barrier integrity when the skin is challenged in this way. Furthermore, we should avoid skin sensitizers such as lanolin, aloe vera and parabens that are commonly found in emollients and these may lead to a delayed hypersensitivity reaction. Bath with warm but not with hot water and avoid harsh soaps and powders that act as drying agents. When we see dry skin, especially in elderly persons, we see on the left side here just the dry skin, the execution of the skin. This skin is crying for humectants. And here we see some superficial infections, indeed a damaged skin with impaired barrier function and this is the combination of these and these situations we definitely have to avoid in elderly patients with psoriasis it will improve their psoriasis by better skin care and what can we prescribe emollients emollients contain humectant fraction and the skin barrier restoration components Typical humectants are pantinol, but also the well-known old urea, glycerin, and sodium PCA, which is a very strong humectant. Skin barrier restoration by applying ceramides and applying pantinol. A topic which is often not discussed when we speak about um, topical therapies or when we speak about skin care is descaling and the use of penetration enhancers. It's important to realize that salicylic acid between 5 and 10 percent is a strong descaling agent, especially useful in the treatment of scallop psoriasis. The safety of salicylic acid, we should realize not to treat to large areas, especially not in children. Intoxication can be tinnitus, nausea, vomiting, gastrointestinal symptoms and acidosis. And then propylene glycol. This has been used as a co-solvent and as an enhancement of drug penetration. But when you have very hyperkeratotic lesions that you want to prepare for adequate topical therapy, then during the night propylene glycol 50% in water can be a very successful way of intervening. In conclusion, avoid dry skin in your patients with psoriasis. Improve the water content and the skin barrier and use descaling and penetration enhancer where needed. Thank you very much for your attention.